Welcome back to Sound 101. I'm Sarah from DD Microphones. We're on location in Los Angeles, where we've been asked to record a scene, but with one catch. A boom has found its way into every one of our shots. Today, we show you how to paint out the boom and save your footage. Before we explain how to remove the boom from your shots, let's talk about how to shoot clean plates and the three shots we set up based on the most likely scenarios where you would need to use them. Our guest is here to explain what clean plates are and why they're so critical. Hey everybody, my name is Clinton Jones. I'm a director, 3D and visual effects artist. I run the Ponisher channel on YouTube and I am here to help you all with your paint outs today. A clean plate is a clean version of your shot, just the background only. No actors, no cameras, no sound guy, nothing, just the background. The first shot is probably the most common problem you'll face. You're filming a close up and the boom dips in accidentally and of course it's always on the best take. This happens a lot when the crew is moving fast and the sound person isn't given enough time to check the frame and understand the space they can work in. Or when exhaustion sets in during a 20 minute take. If you're operating the boom, speak up and push for the time to do your job effectively. Or invest in a boom holder when doing something like a stationary interview. Most people don't get a clean plate at all for shots like this though because nobody plans to dip during a take. Anytime you have the boom dip into frame, the first thing you'll do is punch in if possible. And if you can't punch in, then here's how you fix it. So in shot one, the boom dips in and dips out. Usually this happens on accident and there's no clean plate that is shot. So what do we do? So in After Effects, I'm gonna draw what's called a mask around the object we wanna remove and subtract it from the footage. Now that leaves us with empty pixels and those pixels need to be filled with a clean plate. And since we don't have one, I'm gonna use what's called Content Aware Fill. Content Aware Fill will actually look at that mask, fill in those empty pixels based on the footage, and now you have a clean shot. The second shot that is needed today is an extreme wide on sticks, or a tripod. The camera is locked off and won't be moving. For the purpose of this video, we won't be using lavs to show you how powerful clean plates are. Ideally, if you're working on a professional set, you would also have a lavalier system. For this shot, we placed the boom operator off to the side and committed to cutting them out later. Before doing this, have a conversation with the director, producer, and post supervisor. We talked to the director to confirm that this won't restrict their creative vision. If it does, where can your ideas meet in the middle to maximize creativity and quality? We then talked to the post supervisor to see if this is even possible in the current shot and to confirm what other assets we'll need to capture, like clean plates or 3D scans. Finally, we'll need to take all this information to the producer and get it approved by them. This decision will cost time and money, so they need to know about it. With this approved, the boom operator positions themselves where they aren't casting shadows on the actors and are not standing in the shadows of the actors themselves. The actors and boom operator then clear the frame and the camera operator captures a clean recording of the background. This is the crucial asset you'll need for post. So for shot two, I drew a garbage mask, essentially a loose mask around the boom operator and his shadow for the duration of the shot. At this point, I set the mask to subtract, essentially punching a hole in that footage, and I set the clean plate underneath and feathered that mask to essentially blend those two layers together. But you notice the tennis ball is missing. So what I did was duplicated that main layer, drew a mask around the tennis ball and animated that mask, bringing our tennis ball back in. One of the frames had this weird black halo around it because of the boom operator. They were wearing black and the motion blur caused you to see through the tennis ball behind to the boom operator's clothing. So what I did for that one frame was use an extract effect in After Effects, which allowed me to easily remove that black halo and giving us a completed shot. The third and final shot is naturally the most difficult. The director has requested a wide trucking dolly shot. Again, for the purposes of this video, we don't have a lob, so we'll need to paint out the whole operator in boom. The main difference between this shot and the last is that the background and camera are moving. A static garbage mask won't cut it. The camera is trucking from left to right with the actors. The boom op matching pace with them while making sure to not cross shadows. For clean plates to work, they need to match the layer they are replacing. The composition, lighting, color, and especially movement have to be the same. 
If you have the budget and a boom is crucial to the scene for whatever reason, you can use a motorized movement system where the truck is programmed to be the exact same every single time, allowing you to get clean plates with motion. Most motorized sliders allow you to set keyframes, and once this movement is programmed, run the shot. Be mindful of shadows and make sure your boom doesn't end up in front of or behind the actors. Note that this is more expensive and complicated than just renting a lav system though. We're showing you this as an option. Quick tip here, if possible, shoot a clean plate after every take. That way you ensure that your clean plate's lighting is as close to the shot you're gonna use as possible. Shot three, I actually separated into two halves, a bottom and a top. For the bottom bit, I followed all the same steps as shot two. I drew that garbage mask around the boom op in a shadow, keyframed the mask, animated it over time, made sure it was feathered, and placed the clean plate underneath. And for the top half, I followed those same steps, but I noticed the clean plate in the footage didn't line up because the lighting had changed and the wind didn't line up. You can't match the wind on these leaves here. So what I did to fix that was expand the mask and really feather it. That way it hid that seam nicely. That took care of the top bit, but there were still some trouble areas down by the trash can, mainly because the lighting had shifted. So I duplicated the clean plate, brought it all the way on top, drew a garbage mask around the garbage can, and feathered the heck out of it. And that completed our shot three. If you guys wanna learn the ins and outs of visual effects and 3D animation, come on over to my channel, youtube.com slash Ponisher. There's a link down below. It's gonna be a good time. We got 3D montages, we got breakdowns, we got all this stuff. It's gonna be sweet. Hopefully that was pretty comprehensive, but if you have any questions, drop us a comment below and we'll try to help you out. Until next time, subscribe and happy shooting.